Hi Disruptors, welcome back to our From Zero to Hero video series. My name is Francisco and today we are going to talk about interface in OutSystems. This is the first time that we will take a closer look at the interface tab. If the data is the blood running through the veins of our application and the logic is the muscles that connect everything and allow us to move, interface is the skin of our application. This is what we will show to our users. So let's get started. Let's dive right into OutSystems. In Service Studio, go to the module we previously created and click on the Interface tab. We have four sections, UI flows, images, themes, and scripts. In our video series, we will not cover scripts in details since we consider this to be a more advanced concept to apply while we are starting to work with OutSystems. But just to give you a heads up, this is the place you want to import JavaScript to use module-wide. Let's check our sections and explain what each one represents. First, we have the UI flow section. This is where we create our screens and blocks, basically our front end. This is what the user can interact with. We will take a closer look at it in a few minutes. Then we have the images section. Here we can upload or import images to use on our application. Last but not least, we have the theme section. This is where we can build our themes. A theme is where we can store our CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and this is the code language that grants style to our application. If you open our module theme, you can see that there is nothing there, but if you have a closer look, you will find that OutSystems already has built-in CSS for us. That is why our OutSystem applications look cool by default. In a good architecture application, themes, images, and UI flows are split per module. Themes and images are library information that all your applications can use, not just the module you are working on. Screens and blocks should be split so that you can control the way you deploy your applications. For example, we are developing the screens for our, for our online store. We can have the back office screens for the users to set up the store, and customer screens for the users to see our products and shop there. When we are developing, we might just want to change something to the back office without impacting the customer application. In order to do it, we split the front end in two different modules. Now we're going to take a closer look into screens. What is a screen? A screen is our interface, what will be shown to our users and what they can do to interact with our app. Screens follow a life cycle composed by a set of stages. They can have input parameters, variables, client actions, aggregates and data actions, roles, and also events. On the previous videos, we talked about variables and input variables in logic. They work the same way with screens. Imagine that your screen is your action. When you are using it on your code, you can set the input variable value. Client actions is the logic that runs on the screen and can be whatever you develop it to be. For it to run, you only need to set its trigger, which can be a button, a link, another action, a click on a certain element. You have a lot of possibilities to discover. Then we have aggregates, and these are our way of fetching the data that is stored on our entities. We just say the source of the data that we want to get, set the filters if you need, set the sorting also if you need, and that is it. This is what we call a query. After you set your aggregate and publish, a preview of your data is displayed, which helps you to build your query and check that you are fetching the data that you want to. Data actions are also a way of fetching data, but they are not constrained to only aggregates. If you want, you can use other actions, such as APIs, to fetch data. In the action flow, you can fetch the data that you want, regardless of its source. You just need to ensure that you have outputs and that you are assigning the data to those output variables. Roles are something that we already discussed on our logic videos. We can manage screen permissions by simply changing the screen properties. This is where you can see and set who has access to your screen. 
This will be checked when our screen is loading. If the user does not have a valid role for that screen, an exception is raised. Anonymous means that all users can access the screen and they do not need to be logged in to access it. Registered is when the user is logged in and does not need a specific role. At last, we have events. Events are like a notification that something has happened. We can either react to an event, and this is done by creating handlers, or trigger an event. On screens, we can only create handlers. If we take a closer look, we can see that OutSystem has built-in events for a screen. This relates to the lifecycle of a screen, which we will take a look in a minute. If we use the built-in events, you will see that an action is automatically generated. This is the handler of that event, and it will run when that event happens. The lifecycle of a screen is very important. If you understand this, you will be able to control your application. When we talk about a screen lifecycle, we are talking about several events. We have on initialize. This occurs before the screen is rendered and can be used to set its default data, such as assigning a variable based on the inputs. Keep in mind, you need to keep this simple and avoid slow actions such as local storage operations since it may delay the rendering of your screen. Then we have the on ready event. This occurs after the screen has been initialized and is ready to render, but it hasn't started to yet. You need to also keep this action simple. This event is very useful when, you, when we want to set focus on an input widget or add JavaScript listeners to our screen. You can also initialize a third party component that needs the DOM. Then we have the on render event. This one occurs right after the on ready event handler and every time the data of a screen changes. You can use it to update some third-party components such as a progress bar. We have also the on destroy event and this occurs right before destroying a screen. You can use it to implement logic when the component is disposed such as remove event listeners. To help you have a clear understanding of what we just discussed, we have an exercise, as always. We will be creating screens to display the data of the entities we created on the pre previous videos and to create data on our entities. This is where we will use the logic that we developed on our last video. Before we start to develop our screens, we need to add two new attributes, name and description to the product entity in order to identify the product. Shall we get our hands dirty? Let's go! On our data tab, let's add our name and description attributes. Let's set 500 characters long on description and 200 for the name and we publish the module. Now that we have our data all set, let's develop our screens, finally. Let's start by creating flows, one for each entity, so that we have everything nice and tidy. This is a hero tip. We will start with the product flow. Double click on the product flow to have an overview of the screens you have there. At the moment, they are empty, but we are going to create a list screen for the products where we will have a list of all our products. Then we will have a detail screen where we will be able to see all the details of our product record. For this, we will use an OutSystems Accel Accelerator. We don't advise you to do this on your applications because it creates a lot of things by default, but it is helpful to start to understand how everything works. But again, do not try this at home unless it's for this video, trust me. Simply drag and drop the product entity into the flow and, wait a little bit, magic happens. We have a list and detail screen out of the box. The list screen comes with a table, a quick search filter, table pagination and navigation. And a call to action to add a product. When clicked, the user will be taken to the product detail screen. This call to action is via a button click, as you can see, but the same can be done via link. Links are used to trigger an action, submit data, or navigate to another screen. If you are still in the product list screen, we can see that a link was created on the first column of each line. This link will redirect you directly to the product detail screen. 
Here you can see multiple widgets used to display the current product information. Notice that there will be different information shown depending on the input. If the input is a null variable, it means that you have clicked on add product button and you want to create a new product. If the input has a value, you are navigating from the link on the product list screen and you want to show all the details of a product that is already created. Since the detail screen is used to edit or create new products, this is the perfect use case to call product actions made on the last video. I swear, like, th this feels like it was planned. I don't know. On the screen section, go to the save details client action. Here is your saving action, where you can see that there is already some client side validation being done on the if node. The node checks if the form is valid, making a validation on the input types and mandatory fields. We can add more validation later, but for now we will leave it that way. On the true branch, we should replace the existing message with the previously created action create update product. This action either creates, in the case of adding new product to the list, or updates an existing product when we come from the link in the list screen. To see all of this in action, publish the version by clicking on the green button at the top. Now, let's try creating and updating data in our database. After your module finishes publishing, you can see that the green button has become blue and that we can open our app in a browser. This will open your app on page on the browser. You can see that our list screen is empty since we don't have any data on our database. We will start by creating a new product, add some data, fill out the inputs and hit save. Now, our list screen has the product that we just created. If we click on it, we will see the detailed information that we have filled in. Try it as many times as you want so you get a clear understanding of our CRUD actions. They are one of the most important steps in an application. With this knowledge, you can now apply your other tables, the list and detail screens, this will be your homework so you can use them all in our next video. You can do the same thing for the supplier and transaction entities. You should not use the accelerator for these screens since it will give you a better understanding on how to build the screen itself. The accelerator is good for you to do one example and then base yourself on that example and then you can use the other screens and create them by hand to make sure that you understand every part of creating that screen. That is all for today's video. When we take on the last challenge of the From Zero to Hero series, we will put this knowledge to the test. Again, do not finish those screens with the accelerators. Make sure that you take the example and apply the knowledge that you have, that you have received from all these videos and the example with the accelerator to build yourself your own screens. This is going to help you on the long run. Don't forget to follow us on social media, subscribe to the channel for all our updates and feel free to comment with any doubts. We are here to help you. Thank you for watching and as always, see you soon.